study of musicology and aesthetic at the Comenius University in Bratislava and the France List Music Academy in Budapest, where she gained her doctorate in 2003. She has published volumes in the series dedicated to diocesan of his books, uh, Corpus Antifonalium Uffici Ecclesia Centralis Europe, and both studies and editions of offices in order of Saint of Hungary and Magdeburg uh, provinces. She is a leading researcher at the Department of Early Music History in the Institute of Musicology of the Hungarian Academy of Science. Uh, her topic is history in the Central European area, repertorial layers and transmission in Bohemia, Poland and Hungary. Thank you. First, I, I want to thank the Fundación Levi and special to David Hailey for the possibility I can be here in this distinguished community. <clears throat> the physiognomy of the system of historia in East Central Europe was significantly affected by the relatively late integration of the region to the Christian Europe. The countries of the region joined the Latin Rite and became agent of the Frankish Roman liturgical heritage only by the turn of the millennium. You can see on the right side of the map the leading archbishoprics and bishoprics in Bohemia, Poland and Hungary together with the year of their foundations. This late connection and its essentially similar historical, political and ecclesiastical circumstances in the different countries determine the formation of the liturgical customs and the elaboration of the adopted liturgical framework. We can assume a similar consciousness in the composition of the liturgy as can be observed in the shaping of the ecclesiastical organizations. This conscious approach certainly influenced the compilation of the liturgical repertories and eventually the formation of the local and regional uses. Contrary to the diverse early Western traditions formed with great freedom and the richness of the repertories, revealing itself even through the solid character of the late sources, the Bohemian, Hungarian and Polish dioceses could already be built upon firm basis, whereas they could exhibit some individual character in the special arrangements of the acquired models the reduction of the greater variety and careful selection from the repertory. <clears throat> For this reason, in the study of the chant repertory of this region, including its office chants, we have to use angles, methods and approaches different from those employed in the case of the archaic chants and layers of plain chant. Instead of the slow and spontaneous evolution the interrelationships de developed during centuries and the textual, musical and structural variants, more attention should be paid to the different ways of reception, adoption or rejection, different and rather conscious than spontaneous techniques of adaptation, employment or transformation. In this paper I used this approach when reviewing the saints' offices of the late medieval Bohemia and Hungary in a wider Central European context, which includes the South German and Polish dioceses as well. In answering the question how the offices of these countries contribute to the whole repertory of medieval historie, scholars generally refer to the proper offices of the individual ch centres the chant cycles compiled specially for local or national patrons. This quantitative growth, however, is the rather superficial and not always the most interesting part of the subject discussed in the following in detail. In order to find appropriate guidelines for the examination of the rich and multi-layered historia repertory of the two traditions, the Bohemian and Hungarian, First, we separated the basic offices, the, the mainstream, of, and the secondary ones in them. 
<clears throat> Here you can see the Hungarian and the Bohemian mainstream of history. The same lists are included in, in the tables which are accessible in the Dropbox. To the basic category the historia were assigned that can be found in the majority of the sources available for the individual traditions and whose presence are decisive from the point of view of the right. For the time being, we assigned all other offices to the subsidiary category that seem to be outside the main line and whose appearance seems accidental or unpredictable among the sources of the traditions. These are the offices listed in the tables as Historia on the periphery. When going deeper into the material, the two groups have been further differentiated. If we survive the, sorry, the Historia of the basic group, we see that on the one hand, they consist of in Europe, or at least in Central Europe, widely disseminated cycles, which spontaneously reached and became part of the Bohemian and Hungarian traditions, respectively. On the other hand, they contain offices that are characteristic of one or the other tradition exclusively, and never or exceptionally occur outside them. So, evidently, this sub subgroup includes the Historia of the local patrons. Due to these subdivisions, the Historia material of the basic group is extremely heterogeneous and, contrary to the unifying label traditional, combines offices very different in age and style. Let's see some examples for both subdivisions. The table shows the material of 10 Historia. These cycles can be found in the sources of both traditions, essentially in the same form and arrangement, without any significant variance in their melodies. Most of them were transmitted in the same fixed form among the traditions of the South German region as well. An exception is the office for St. Augustine, La Terra Mater Nostra, which occurs only sporadically in South German diocesan practices, whereas its consistent use is characteristic of the Hungarian, Bohemian and Silesian dioceses of Wrocław. Similarly, we find the rhyme office of St. Ursula, Latis Canamus Vocibus, primarily in the sources of the Polish, Polish Silesian region. This historia was taken over by the Central Bohemian and Hungarian traditions as well, unlike the other office, Gaudat Ecclesia, characteristic of the South German area. As examples to the other subdivision, that is the offices present exclusively in the Hungarian or the Bohemian basic repertory, there are the offices for St. Vitus, Wenceslaus, Ludmilla and Sigismundus in the Bohemian, and those for King St. Stephen, King Ladislaus, Amaricus, Demetrius and the hermits Andreas and Benedictus in the Hungarian tradition. The historia of the secondary group are understandable even more heterogeneous than those of the basic layer. The diversity in their age and style is still more significant, and even the unifying force of the tradition itself plays much lesser role. Although these offices might appear as separate entities, which can be studied out of context and best described in independent case studies, with careful analysis and proper interpretation of them and their background, we can discover some loose system of general tendencies behind them. Considering this, this historia can be discussed according to the following categories. First, historia taken over from neighboring regions, so the geographical proximity. In sources from the peripheral areas of a country, we often come across offices that have no roots in the domestic cult system, but were taken over from the neighboring traditions without becoming stable element of their new environment. From this point of view, one of the most interesting cases is the diverse group of historie found in, uh, in the northern part of medieval Hungary. You can see the map of, uh, of medieval Hungary with the three ecclesiastical provinces, the main archdiocese of, of Estergon, Strigonium, the second archdiocese of Kalocsa in the southwest, 
and the Diocese of Transylvania, Varadino, in the east. So the northern area, called Sepec or Sepus or Spish in today's Slovakia, belonged to the jurisdiction of the Stigonian Archbishopric. Here the Stigonian liturgical use was followed. At the same time, since it was adjacent to, uh, to the countries of the Bohemian Crown in the west, uh, as well as to Poland, to the dioceses of Wroclaw and Krakow in the north, its sources frequently included historia otherwise belonging to those countries. For example, the, the Rhine office, Ades Dies Laetitiae for Wenceslaus, the Bohemian martyr duke, is a stable element of all Bohemian's office sources from the 14th century on. Its Hungarian sources, however, originate almost exclusively in the northern region of the country. As a similar geographically determined case, the Historia Odecus Trevnitie, or known as Letare Germania, for the Silesian patron Saint Hedwig, may, may be mentioned, which also appears in three <coughs> sources from northern Hungary. This office occurs sporadically also elsewhere in the wider Central European re region, for example in Passau, but it can be documented mainly from Wroclaw, the center of the cult of, uh, of St. Hedley. <clears throat> the second aspect, transferring of historia along personal or institutional cultural connections. For instance, this can be illustrated by the appearance of some strange office, offices in sources from the medieval bishopric of Zagreb. From, eight, uh, from 1180, Zagreb was subordinated to the Archbishopric of Kalocha, the second ecclesiastical province in Hungary founded by King Stephen shortly after the millennium, which covered the southern territories of medieval Hungary, including a great part of today Croatia. At the beginning of the 14th century, the Italian Dominican monk Agostino Gazzotti the new bishop of Zagreb reformed the liturgy of the bishopric. As a consequence, several Dominican feasts appeared in the office sources of the region, then became integral part of the Zagrebian use. So the, the Historia Felix Thomas Doctor for Thomas Aquinas, the Collatator Turba for Petrus Martyr, and Gauda Felix Parents Hispania for Dominic. Some offices in a 15th century antiphona from, East Hung from the East Hungarian Varad, Varadim, are witnesses of a similar cultural connection. Although on the whole the manuscript is a representative of the medieval East Hungarian office tradition, Transylvania Varadim, including all its repertorial, textual and musical features, some of its historiae are alien to the otherwise homogeneous corpus. For example, the offices Jucundetur in hoc solemnio for Saint Martha and Avalux et Decus for Matthias Apostle are unknown in the true Hungarian office tradition, thus in the breviaries, breviaries of the East Hungarian region, whereas both of them are indispensable elements of the central Bohemian tradition. The cult of Martha was imported from southern France in the 1330s by Jan Zdražić, Bishop of Prague. From that time on, during the following 170 years, the office for Martha was included in all of his sources of Prague. Similarly, it took place also in the 14th century that the Historia of Matthias, Avalux et Decus, became integral part of the Prague office repertory. Based on its special antiphon cycle for the Lords, Surgens Petrus in Medio, it can be sharply differentiated from the Trier redaction of the Historia. In the Antiphonale Varadiense, we find both Historiae in their Bohemian redaction, indicating the, the direction of the import. The main figure behind it was Johannes Philippets, the Moravian born bishop of the Varadinum diocese. He ordered the representative antiphona for the Varad Cathedral, characteristically from a Bohemian and not a Hungarian workshop, where in the course of preparation not only domestic but Bohemian models 
must have been used as well. Here you see the Historia of St. Martha in the Antifonal Varadiense, and here the reconstructed fragments of the Matthias Historia with the characteristic antiphons for louds. In some cases, unusual offices of peripheral areas have nothing to do with geographical or, or cultural connections, but they reflect a kind of intentional separation from the ecclesiastical center, so showing aspiration for independency. From among medieval Hungarian uses and regions, a good example of it are the numerous extraordinary office, offices of the Zagrebian bishopric. For the Feast of Visitatio of the Virgin, the overwhelming majority of the Hungarian sources prescribe the Historia Exurgens Autem Maria attributed to Johannes de Jemstein, whereas the alternative office by Adam Easton, the Accident Laudent Virginis, occurs only in a few breviaries from the north. In the Zagrebian sources, however, we find exclusively the latter, whereas they completely ignore the Historia Exurgens Autem. <coughs> This creative approach revealed itself even in the individual formation of the Historia for the national patron saints. The Zagrebian diocese, which chose King St. Stephen as its own patron, didn't take over the saint's rhyme office, Ave Beaterex Stefane, composed at the end of the 13th century and generally accepted from that time in Hungary, but instead used another office as its own, the Convenientes in Unum, compiled mostly from prosaic texts. Also, the regional use of Transylvania followed its own path concerning its historia for St. Emmerich. Instead of the Strigonian office Letare Pannonia, in the breviaries originating in this region, we find the individual compilation in Laudis Pannonia Survit. From the region of medieval Hungary, only the Zagrebian sources <coughs> preserved the rhyme of his Magna Potens Humilis for St. Dionysius. Dionysius cannot be counted among the highly cultivated saints either of the Hungarian or the Bohemian tradition, and the very few sources that include his feast at all invariably contain the prosaic history Adastan Pedati Dionysi. The Zagrebian office, Magna Potens Humilis, can be regarded as a curiosity even viewed in a broader European context. In summary, we can say that the late East Central European traditions are rather conservative by their nature. They have firm structure, their liturgical system codified by elaborate regulations, left little room for new wandering offices. Accordingly, it is not surprising for both the Bohemian and Hungarian traditions that the number of mainstream offices is relatively small, whereas, on the contrary, there is a great number of historiae outside the main corpus. The two phenomena are mutually inclusive. The confinement in the basic repertory compels the new historia arriving from different directions to remain within the peripheral areas, and vice versa, the peripheral uses were not strong enough to make these offices incorporated into the basic layer. The restraining attitude of the centers resulted in a further characteristic in the de development of the office repertory of Central European diocesan use, namely the gradual character of the transmission and integration, or in some cases, their incompleteness. The gradual assimilation <coughs> took place sometimes in the form of properization, this means the well-known way of gradually forming a historia propria from a common office. For instance, the popular office for St. Elizabeth, the Tare Germania, didn't find its way at one blow to the secular Prague tradition. The, the early ordinals still prescribed the office of the Commune Sanctorum for St. Elizabeth. The main text of the 14th century Prague breviary represents the next step giving common matins in the main text, but proper antiphons in the first vespers. Finally, in the appendix of the same source, the complete Historia Letare Germania is given, similar to all later Bohemian sources. 
In some cases, the process didn't come to an end with the integration of a full office, but stopped halfway. This incompleteness can be well demonstrated by the special form of the Historia in the Prague tradition. The office of, for the, the December feast of St. John, probably composed by Stephen of Liege, quickly spread from the Western Frankish region over Central Europe from the 11th century. In the majority of the South German uses, it didn't displace the classic office of the feast, the Quidice Litvatium, but instead served as an alternative cycle, either on the feast day itself or on its octave. In the Prague tradition, however, the two offices, the archaic Quivitzarit and the newer Johannes Apostolus, were combined in a special way. Quivitzarit kept its primary position in the matins of the feast, moreover, as a sign of conservatism, it was repeated on the octave as well. The new office, Johannes Apostolus, was sung, sung on the octave too, but not in the matins, in its usual place as well, but in the law. As a consequence, the original cycle with its nine antiphons conceived for the Matins had to be shortened for the Lords, gave room only six antiphons. Eventually, the Historia Johannes Apostolis was preserved in the Prague tradition in this abbreviated form, beginning with the earliest cathedral sources survived from the 13th century. The remaining three antiphons of the cycle only appear in the printed Prague Reviary, uh, printed in uh, 1492, where they are used as commemoration antiphons during the period in Frauptava. It was the conservative and rather rejective attitude characteristic of the main corpus of Historie, of the Bohemian and Hungarian sources that prevented the assimilation of many late medieval popular rhyme offices. For example, the following offices popular across Europe, including the German-speaking areas, remain outside the main corpus of the Bohemian and Hungarian traditions and appear only in a few peripheral sources. The Gratulator Regi Digna for St. Barbara, O Pastor Eterna for Achatius, Gloriosa Splendid Orbi from St. Jacobus, Gloriosa et Beatissima for Afra. None of the several historia of St. Anne found its way to the central Bohemian tradition, whereas the Historia of Egidius, Egidius were omitted from the mainstream of the Hungarian office repertory. Paradoxically, this tendency revealed itself, in some cases, of domestic saints as well. The conservative attitude, the adherence to the established system of the office, proved to be stronger than the demonstration of any national character. The Historia Adest Dies Gloriosa, compiled in honor of the Moravian missionary bishops Cyrillus and Methodius, is only contained in one 14th century breviary from the Prague Cathedral. The office Illis Horis at Momentis, to the feast of the five brothers, the Quinque Frates, uh, martyred on Polish territory in, in the year 1003 is only recorded in a few breviaries from the Moravia and in a fragmentary form in one antiphona from Hradec Kralove, so East, East Bohemia. The Historia Agemater Ecclesia, written in honor of St. Procopius, the 1204 canonized abbot of the Benedictine monastery in Sazava, is only known from three Bohemian sources. In the great majority of the sources, all three saints were celebrated with offices from the Comune Sanctorum instead of their existing Historia Propria. As is clear from the foregoing, in the study of Central European Historia, special emphasis should be given to the complex and sometimes ambiguous interrelationship between center and periphery. On the one hand, the central sources represent the substantial characteristics of the individual traditions in the purest form, the stock of saint offices which constituted the innermost layer of them through the whole Middle Ages. On the other hand, the peripheral sources preserved those components that were not integrated into the main corpus, but under special influences only ornamented the repertory on the surface. At the same time, besides popular late historia, the peripheral sources also preserved elements 
that once in the early times of the spontaneous formation of the tradition belonged to the core repertory, later, however, were removed from there for various reasons. In the later central sources, compiled already according to strict, strict prescriptions, there was no room for them anymore, but institutions farther from the ecclesiastical centers and taking the rules less seriously may have continued to use them. An important task of the study of peripheral sources is to distinguish their superficial and variable layers from those that might have preserved traces of an archaic stage of evolution of the central tradition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Some questions? Barbara. Yeah, it seems like 